In this video, we'll explore the looping and start end frame features of Midjourney's video model, including some tips and creative workflows that you may not have thought to try. Let's start with how to create a looped video. I'll be demonstrating on the website, for Discord users, you'll want to watch my last monthly update video next for specific instructions. There are a few ways to get your starting frame added to the prompt. For an external image, you can drag it from your computer to the prompt bar and drop it here. Or click here if you want to upload or select from previously uploaded images. Or if you already have an image open on Midjourney, just click animate manually. Then type a prompt or leave it blank. For looping, you want to make sure that the loop box is checked. This tells Midjourney that your starting frame will also be your end frame. Then pick low or high motion and submit the job. We also now have the option to change how many video results Midjourney gives us for each job. So if you want to save your fast hours, you can change your default video batch size in the settings or use the BS parameter. Yes, really. So looping is pretty straightforward to run, but I want to show you some different examples of how you can use it. First is characters in motion. For this type of looping, you want to make sure that the character already appears to be in motion in your starting frame. In this starting frame, the astronaut is mid stride. This is important because if he was just standing there, a looped video would have him walking and then stopping every five seconds. Here I started with an image of a woman playing a guitar and was able to get a really smooth loop, which isn't a guarantee with every video loop you try to create. I wanted this guy to look like he was continually jumping over a brick wall. I ran this a few times with a few different prompts, but there was always an awkward pause or slowdown at the end as he transitioned back to that starting frame position. Things like this will happen and the best that you can do for now is to try to get more specific with the prompt or create a slightly different start frame. Other ideas for character loops include making a character look like they're talking continuously or doing some other activities such as crocheting. Another way to use looping is for rotating objects and characters. I made this image of an iridescent rock and used the prompt 3D object orbits in place. For characters, this is a great way to view a character from different angles. Here I prompted for the character to spin in place. You can also try something like 3D orbit around a character. And depending on the browser that you have, you can then open the video in a separate tab and save a specific frame to drop into your project or use in other prompts. Creating environmental loops such as with moving water or fire can be really satisfying. Try something like ocean waves rolling ashore, a raging river, or a campfire. Or maybe you want some chaotic and busy scenes such as city traffic or crowds moving around a person. You can also apply looping to extended videos, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Next, let's talk about using start end frames. This feature allows you to control exactly how your video begins and ends. To set this up, add your starting frame like I showed earlier, then add your end frame by dragging an image over from your organized page, uploading from your computer, or selecting from previously uploaded images. Add your prompt text or leave it blank, select your motion and submit. One important thing to know is that video will use the aspect ratio of your starting frame. So if your start frame is wide and your end frame is tall, Midjourney will crop or zoom in on the end frame to match that wide aspect ratio. So for best results, use images that have the same aspect ratio. Let's go through some more creative ways to use start and end frame. First is camera movement. In previous videos, I covered how to use prompt text to direct camera movement, but you can also use start and end frames to do this. So I have this image and I used Midjourney's image editor to zoom out and used that zoomed out version as my end frame. In my experience, the video model really likes to zoom in on faces regardless of what prompt you use, but by using an end frame, we can at least guarantee that most of the final clip will be zooming out. Be careful when choosing your frames for zoom effects though. I created a zoomed out version of this astronaut running, but when I use these two frames together, he's running in place because his position in the end frame didn't change and neither did his immediate surroundings. So keep this in mind. Another example is panning. I started with this image and used the editor to create a panned view for the end frame. I'm still using prompt text to describe the motion, but you could just leave this blank too and let Midjourney decide what happens. Another great use for start end frames is creating a perspective shift using images created with an Omni reference. I started with this front view of a character, then I created another angle of the same character and used these as the start and end frames to create this clip of her pointing. I have a whole tutorial guide on creating character assets with Omni reference that I recently published to my Patreon, I'll link that below. But you can use this approach with objects too. 
I used this boot as an Omni reference to create a new image of the boot from a different angle. Then with start and end frame, I was able to get a rotation of it. I did prompt for the camera to move around the boot, but instead got the boot rotating in place. You can also try morphing between different characters and scenes. I used these two images and left the video prompt blank just to see what Midjourney would do, and I kind of like the result. Here I started with this guy. Then I used the editor to keep the background the same, but I erased the guy and replaced him with a new one. Some parts of the resulting transition are interesting, like the appearance of his beard. Others, like his outfit change, are a bit more abrupt, but it's kind of fun to play around with. I also like trying to morph between different objects. Similar to the last example, I started with this image and then I used the editor to replace the amorphous object with something spiky. And one more, I attempted a day to night transition of this grassy scene. To create the end frame, I used the editor to erase the sky and retexture the image to make it look like a night scene. Retexture lets you change the style of an image while keeping the core structure of the image the same. It's not perfect and the details will change, but for a scene like this, it works pretty well. I have a bunch of retexture examples in my image editor video that I'll link below. Background replacement is one of my favorite things to try with Star End Frame. I started with this image and then I used Canva to erase the background and downloaded it as a new PNG file with transparency. You can try to erase the background with Midjourney's editor, but I haven't had the best luck getting a clean background selection. Adobe also has a free background remover that I'll link below. So with the background removed, I uploaded this to Midjourney's editor and prompted for several different backgrounds. You can also load in your own backgrounds using layers down here. These are a few of the images that were generated. I used these two images as the start and end frames to make the first clip. Then I extended one of the video results but used a new end frame. So the extended video makes it look like she's riding through different landscape scenery. You can extend a video up to four times, creating a clip up to 21 seconds long, and each time you extend, you can choose a new end frame. So you can create a whole long scene where you have more control over what happens. And remember I mentioned earlier that you can also loop extended videos. So after clicking extend, just make sure that you have the loop box checked and your new extended video will transition back to that very first starting frame that you used at the beginning of the video. You can also use start and end frames to play around with visual effects. I blurred this image in Photoshop and used the blurred image as the start frame and the original image as the end frame and I was able to get this cool effect of the video coming into focus. Something else to consider that doesn't get a lot of attention is using Remix to create different versions of your starting frame that you can then use as an end frame. You can do this with Vary as well, but Remix lets you change the prompt, which is important. Here I have an image of a character and I want to create a new image of that same character in the same scene, but I want him in a different pose. So I clicked Remix Strong you can choose between subtle or strong depending on how much variation you want in your results. Then I added that same image of him as an Omni reference. For the prompt, it's important to include all of the parts of the Omni reference that you want to show up in your results. So the character, his outfit, the doorway to the coffee shop, and what I want different is that I want him to wave at the camera, so I include that as well. Here's an image result that I got on my first try. Then I created the video using the original image as the start frame and the remixed image as the end frame, and this is one of the results. So I really like this approach because you have more control over the scene, especially when using an Omni reference to create the end frame. It can help you keep more detail consistent throughout the whole clip. So I hope you found those tips helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where you'll find all of my monthly prompt collections exclusive videos, and other mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.